Services. Good morning. My name is Rosalyn, and we welcome all of you to St. Alphonsus Liguori Parish to celebrate the third Sunday of Lent. We fail, we sin, we fall. As humans, we are weak, so we turn to God for strength. During this penitential season, we are keenly aware of our need for mercy and forgiveness. God's mercy and forgiveness came to full fruition in Jesus, who redeemed us by taking on our failings, our sins, our mortality. God has the words of everlasting life. As we sing in the psalm today, so we look to God this day for words of mercy and love as we recommit ourselves to our Lenten disciples of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Our celebrant for this Mass is Father Joseph Lay, our pastor. We respectfully ask that you place your cell phones on silence during this liturgy and that you keep your mask on for your entire stay in the building. Thank you. Of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of the Lord be with you all. In the Gospel reading today, Jesus angrily drove out uh, the people who make the house of God dirty. So let us take a, a deep look at our soul, the temple of God, and we may recognize that there's dust and sins and guilt in there. And we ask Jesus for forgiveness and mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, 
forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting prayer and almsgiving has shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, God delivered all these commandments. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery. You shall not have other gods besides me. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave unpunished the one who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep the holy, the Sabbath day. Honor your father and your mother, that you may have a long life in the land which your Lord, your God, is giving you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not cover, covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male or female slave, nor his ox or ass, nor anything else that belongs to him. The word of the Lord. Salvation is joy to me in your wisdom show the
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those who are called, Jews and Greeks alike, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For our foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Since the Passover of the Jews were near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of gourds and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen, and spilled the coins of the money changers, and overturned their tables. And to those who sold dove, he said, Take this out of here, and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of the scriptures, Zeal for your house will consume me, at this, the Jews answered and said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy the temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scriptures, and the word of Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem for the feast of Passover, many began to believe in his name. When they saw the signs he was doing, but Jesus would not trust himself to them because they knew them all and did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it well. The Gospel of the Lord. Before I became the pastor of this parish, I came to talk with Father Cook. He's a former pastor here. So he took me around the church and the, and the school and the office. And at the end, before I, I left, I said to him, can you show me your living space? And he took me to his residence. So Father Kirk lived with Father Jack. Father Jack is a senior priest who is a resident there. And he showed me his rooms. Father Kirk have two rooms, one big room, and he used it for his bedroom, and then a smaller room. He used it as the prayer corner, and he have a small office there. So, and then they, and Father Jack and Father Kirk have a common living room. So when I moved in, I decided to keep the same, you know, 
I used a bigger room for my bedroom and a smaller room for the place that I pray in, in the office. But after a while, especially when pandemic stopped, Father Jack, he had no place to go. But he stayed home 24 hours a day, and he spent a lot of time in the common living room. He watched TV, and sometimes he slept there too. So I realized that I have no, no place for myself. Uh, I, I don't have a living room where I can read, can and spend time and play music, and where I don't have the place to have a friend come over and talk. So I just sat there and complained, I don't have, I didn't have the living room. But recently, I decided to change. I, I used the smaller room to be my bedroom. I don't need a big bedroom. Uh, and then I turned uh, the bigger room to be my living room. So I did some investment in there and turned it to the beautiful living room for me. And now I have the, the piano, the guitar, uh, where I can play music. And I even have a bird, you know, who keeps singing and talk to me. So I really, really love my living room now. I enjoy it. But Back then, I didn't have it. The point is not I didn't have it, but I didn't make the room for, for that. So friend, Lenten seasons is a time to make change. Right? Lent is not a time that we, we do something extra, like uh, give up something or fast a fast certain day, and abstain from mid certain day, and do some pray. But Jesus wants from us is to make change, radical change, big change, to make room, to make room for God. So that's why one of my favorite uh, Lenten season is, change your hearts this time. Your word says this can be, change your heart, my this time. To change our heart, change our mind, and make room for God. Change also include with cleansing, removing all the stuff that's not supposed to be there in our soul. Just recall the, the gospel reading today, when Jesus walked into the temple of Jerusalem, he saw people doing things, right? The priests take care of the temple and all kinds of business taking place there. But the temple is the place to worship God, the place to engage the Lord, the place to receive God's forgiveness. But when Jesus was there, he found out that they had nothing to do with God. It's about business, about money, about making money. The place for God is God, the house of God. But when God is there, Jesus was there, they couldn't recognize him. He's the one who can forgive. But they don't know that. They keep doing a lot of stuff. But that's not, not that important. And Jesus said, he had nothing for God. So friend, Jesus will come to us today, and if we ask, invite him, we ask him to shadow our life for one week or maybe for one day, what should he say to us? He may say to us, you're doing a good job, keep doing what you're doing, that's great. But maybe Jesus say, something you need to change, something you need to Remove out of your daily life some bad habits, some sinful habit that you have been doing. Or maybe Jesus said to, you, to, 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 to us that John or Joe or Larry, you have to change. You have to restructure your life, your daily life. You have to make room for me, for God. 
you need to cleanse your house, and I will help you to do so through the sacrament of reconciliation. So friends, Lent and seasons is a wonderful opportunity for us to make big change in our life. Because we are called to do that. And we have the means, the opportunities, through the service of the church, through the sacraments that offer to us every week and every day here. We can do that. And if we do so, Jesus will, will help us to see the fruit of that, like I saw the fruit of my change at my, my own living room. So if we made that change with Jesus' help, we will have a room for God. So we see that God is not something in our life, but we see that God is the center of our life. We don't see going to church or praise is in, in the, the doing list in our daily life. We see going to church, praying, meditation is the, our priority of our daily life and every week. And if we do so, if Jesus is the center of our life, if God, have, God is a priority of our life, we can see everything in our life, in our families, will have, will have the, in the right order. We don't see the conflict there. We see that we can live together with truly love, with peace and hope. So friend, Lenten is a time for change. Change our heart this time. And the word of God will help us to do so. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the unbegotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, be God not made, consubstantial with the Father, with all things were made. For us men of our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit who encountered the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, who crucified upon Pontius Pilate. He suffered as he was buried and rose again on the third day. It accorded with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds for the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoke to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us bring the praise of all the faithful to God who led the chosen people out of slavery and raised Christ from the dead. For our church, led by Pope Francis, that we might cleanse ourselves of corruption and division as we renew our commitment to the mission Jesus left us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders of nations will work towards the common good of all so that those who live on the margins of society are given assistance and support, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our catechumen, Ben, that he might always find in the Lord the words of everlasting life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer from domestic violence, may God help them free themselves from abuse and live safely in the peace of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our community who are unable to worship with us because of illness, especially Marge Fosselman, 
Marcia Casucciolo, Matt Ramaglia, Fawn Galebrath, Jesus Del Faro, Gay Meisen, Clayton Berrigan, Tom O'Brien, Rita Conlin, Baby Walter Thompson, and Karen Garber. For those in need of our prayers and those mentioned in the book of petitions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Betsy Jennings, for all the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, and for those we remember at this Mass, Michael Whalen, Carl Farina, and Vlada Kopp, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Blessed are you, O God. You guide us with your commandments and comfort us when we fall. Listen to the praise we make and grant them according to your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. My sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who bless pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts that free from disorder of factions, they may so deal with the things of the passing world, as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you, and without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. May holy, therefore, this gift we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and gave him thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we pour down for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When, when we, we eat this bread and drink this cup, cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, place of bishop, and all those who serve your church. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostle and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heir to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior command and form the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us, this say, our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from our distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take, take away, away the sins, sins of the world. world. Have, Have mercy on us. us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Bless ye, thou call to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should under my roof. Don't and say the word that my soul shall be healed.
for living, for dying, Lord, for rising from the dead. We praise you. to you, remember you, in the breaking of this bread, we drink the cup, the promise that you made.
Let us pray. If we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven, it had nourished while still on earth. With the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. We have a few announcements. The schedule for Easter Masses is available in today's bulletin. Reservations will be required for Palm Sunday, Holy Week, and Easter Masses. The reservation system will open Monday, March 15th. Information for how to make a reservation will be in next week's bulletin, on the website, and sent to your email if you are signed up to receive parish email. The Feast of St. Joseph is on Friday, March 19th. A novena prayer, which begins on March 10th, is available in the narthex along with slips of paper for your prayer intentions. We welcome you to place your prayer intentions for the novena in the basket that is in front of the statue of St. Joseph here in church and to pick up the novena and other prayers to St. Joseph from the table in the narthex. The American Heritage Girl annual flower sale is coming up. Information is in the bulletin. Order forms are in the narthex. The Knights of Columbus are celebrating March Madness by offering free membership to all men 18 and older through June 30th. New members receive a reserved front row seat for Easter Sunday for new members and their families. See the information in the bulletin or speak to a representative after Mass. Please enjoy our printed bulletin. If you brought one with you into church, please take it home. Due to virus precautions, anything left in the church must be thrown away. Thank you. I'm very happy to see that uh, we have more and more people going back to church. Uh, but we still need a lot, a lot of empty uh, seats right here. So I really need all of you here uh, to be the evangelist. Go out and convince your family, your friends, your neighbor to go back to church and worship, especially those who already have the vaccine, and I hope in the next few months, and, and many of us will receive the vaccines and we have some kind of protection for us to, to get back to, to church. So we need your help to be the, the evangelist, to bring people back to church. The Lord be with you. Direct your people, we pray, the heart of your faithful, and in your kindness, grant your servant this grace, and abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands through Christ our Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Master ended, let it go forth to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>